Hey guys, welcome back. Today is day 48 in the book, What If God Wrote Your Bucket List by Jay Paleotner. The title of today's chapter is Know the Pythagorean Theorem. So if you haven't been with us for one of our What If Wednesdays, what we do is we read a chapter out of this book. It's usually just a couple pages and it is the author's idea of what God would put on your bucket list if he was writing it for you. So we just read the chapter and then we talk about what he says in it afterwards. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in and read it. Like most students, you probably learned the Pythagorean theorem in seventh or eighth grade and promptly forgot it the following summer. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I still remember it. <laughs> you may recall that it has something to do with how the two short sides of a triangle relate to the longer side. You may even hazily remember the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. When I was in middle school, I was just catching on to the Pythagorean theorem when my family sat down to watch the annual broadcast of The Wizard of Oz. This was before VCR, back when families sat together and watched broadcast television as it was being broadcast. As I watched one of the final scenes in the 1939 MGM classic, something struck me as inaccurate. While rescuing Dorothy, the Scarecrow had displayed innovation and street smarts, which, according to the wizard, earned him an honorary diploma. When the quartet arrived back in the Emerald City, the scriptwriter needed to demonstrate how the character, in search of a brain, had suddenly realized his immense intellect. In the scene, the Scarecrow receives the faux diploma, points to the side of his head, and rapidly rattles off a faux Pythagorean theorem. This is exactly what actor Ray Blogger says. Bulger. I think it's Bulger. The sum of the square root of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. Well, that's really not even close. Any mid-level math student would tell you that the Pythagorean theorem applies to right triangles and not isosceles triangles. That the words root and root do not belong, and that the variable must be the hypotenuse. Accurately stated, the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the other two sides. Jay, I'm not prepared for this today. <laughs> I assume the screenwriter had access to the proper wording of the ancient principle of geometry, but the film crew's consensus was that it just didn't matter. <laughs> Why fuss about whether Mr. Bulger says isosceles or hypotenuse? No one remembers the exact definition anyways. <laughs> Besides, in the end, the scarecrow didn't have to be smart. He only had to appear smart. This is all very dangerous territory. I realize it's just a movie, and viewers had already suspended belief by hurtling over the rainbow, skipping with the scarecrow, and fleeing flying monkeys. But the 1939 filmmakers are suggesting that when it comes to something we know to be true, such as the Pythagorean theorem, accuracy doesn't matter. However, accuracy does matter, otherwise chaos reigns. If the rails don't line up, train cars tip over. If the city inspector miscalculates, your tap water becomes poisonous. If God allows the earth to spin 2% slower, the oceans slosh into your backyard. There is order to the universe, and we need to do what we can to keep order in our world. Knowledge is the beginning of order. Railroad engineers know how to align and secure train tracks. Your local water department follows clear guidelines for treating and distributing water. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. God knew what he was doing when he hung the stars and spun the planets. There is order. There is truth. We can know it. As a matter of fact, we must know it. As a 12-year-old, I knew the Wizard of Oz script was scientifically inaccurate because I knew the Pythagorean theorem. I compared fiction to truth. As an adult, I can do the same. Our culture presents all kinds of options, some helpful, some not so helpful. How can we know the truth? The answer is simply stated, but takes a lifetime to apply. God has revealed truth in the Bible, and it's our job to know it and apply it to our lives. Yes, we'll make mistakes, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try. Need examples? Exodus 20, 13 through 15 
teaches we shouldn't murder, commit adultery, or steal. Deuteronomy 15, 7, and 8 teaches we should be generous to the less fortunate. Matthew 7, 1 through 5 teaches we should not be self-righteous or hypocritical. Romans 13, 1 teaches we should respect government authority. And Matthew 6, 14, and 15 teaches we should be eager to forgive others. The truth we all seek is found in the Bible. Without it, we're setting ourselves up for serious judgment. In Matthew 22, the Sadducees tried to trap Jesus with a question about heaven that led to a warning. You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. And that's verse 29. Acts 17, 11 describes how those who sought truth were of more notable character where they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scripture every day to see what Paul said was true. Is knowing the great truth of a mathematical theory on God's bucket list? Probably not. But God does place a high value on knowing and living according to the truth of the Bible. In summary, if you're attempting to state the Pythagorean theorem, accuracy is achievable. If you're trying to live your best life, a trustworthy and accurate plan is written down for you. Grab your Bible and dig into your brain. <laughs> and dig into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your Bible and dig in using your brain, heart, and courage. And then he has check in the list and it says, The Bible shouldn't be intimidating. It should be comforting. We can live without speculation. We can know right from wrong. We can know truth. And by the way, the scriptures may be thousands of years old, but they still apply. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. That's Psalms 119, 160. And then a little check mark on the bottom that says, know the truth because you can. So basically, it's important to be in your Bible and to be reading the scripture. And it's a privilege to be able to do that. So if we have the ability to be able to learn what is right so that we can follow what is right, then why would we not do that? It's a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. And something that I wrote down while we were doing it was the best way to keep in check is to know the scripture and know the power of God, which Jay kind of says that in different words, but like that's how we can know that we're do like we're living not perfectly, but we're living life according to the truth of what we know. That's the best way that we can know that we are living a good life to the best of our ability is to know what God's word says and about what is right and what is wrong. And if we follow that, then hopefully we're doing something right. <laughs> so that's it for this week's What If Wednesday. We hope you guys got something out of it, even if it was just the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> <laughs> We, we hope, hope you, you got, got more, more than, than that. that. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you guys got more than that out of it. But <laughs> if that's all you got out of it, at least you know the Pythagorean theorem now. <laughs> Anyways, be sure you come back next week for day 49. And the title is Give Credit Where Credit is Due. So we hope you guys enjoyed um, doing that chapter with us. If you want to come and do the next chapter with us, come back next Wednesday. And we also post videos on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays are Bible studies and Fridays videos are something fun. Um, usually makeup, uh, food, DIYs, fashion, anything that pertains to anything that we're interested in basically. So those are always fun and we hope to see you guys there. We hope to see you in the next one of these. If you guys do enjoy our videos, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you want to be notified when we upload, hit the little bell after you subscribe. Have a good day, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.